Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the weekly update from the Ashland Hawkwatch in Hokesson, Delaware. Today is November 8th, 2024. Overall, the weather was pretty mild. We had some days with completely blue skies, but on many days we had some cirrus clouds to help with spotting. And the one morning we started off with a lot of fog and then we had mostly cloudy skies for a part of the day. So a little bit of a change in the weather compared to those consistently blue skies that we had a few weeks ago. And it continues to be quite warm. We had numerous days with temperatures up in the 70s or even up close to 80. So unseasonably warm as we're here in early November. Let's jump right into the raptor photos. Here we have a small hawk. We see it has a long tail, so we should be thinking Excipiter genus. And on this bird, we see orange barring underneath. So that tells us it's an adult of either sharp-shinned hawk or Cooper's hawk. And on this bird, we see a relatively small head with a big eyeball, so sort of a bug-eyed look to it. And also, we see that the cap of the head extends all the way down across the back of the neck, known as the nape. That gives us another hint that this bird has a more hooded appearance. And we also see a very squared off tip to the tail because all of the tail feathers seem to be the same length. And those are all good field marks for an adult sharp-shinned hawk. Here we see another raptor that has rounded wingtips and a long tail, so we should be thinking Excipiter. Looking at this bird, looking at the streaking underneath, we see that this is a juvenile compared to the orange barring that we saw on the adult in the previous photo. And looking at the streaking, it's sort of a teardrop streaking that's more concentrated on the upper breast, not so much as we go down lower. And looking at the tip of the tail, you can see that the outer tail feathers are a bit shorter than the central ones. You can see that the tail feathers end about here, and that's because those outer ones fold underneath. So those two field marks, the streaking and the tip of the tail, would normally be good field marks for juvenile Cooper's hawk. However, if we look at the overall shape and structure of this bird, look at the head. This is a very small head. And again, it has that bug-eyed appearance, kind of a big, cute eyeball on a small head. It doesn't have the real fierce face that a Cooper's hawk normally shows. And looking at the overall shape of the bird in terms of the wings, the wings don't look really long and lanky. They look almost more short and compact and rounded. You can see there's kind of some bulging secondaries. And also the tail doesn't look super, super long. It's the long tail of an excipiter, but it's not as long as we would expect on a Cooper's hawk. And so just based on the overall shape and proportions of this bird, I would say that this is a juvenile sharp-shinned hawk. But you might say, how do we reconcile that some of the field marks look like Cooper's hawk and some look like sharp-shinned hawk? And I would say in this case, it's because the field marks that look like Cooper's hawk are somewhat variable. So the streaking to the underside of the Sharpie, some of them have a lot of thick, messy streaking. And in fact, we'll see a photo of one like that later on. But some of them are more lightly marked like this. And the tip of the tail is also variable, and it's usually the female sharp-shinned hawks, which are the larger ones that sometimes show the different length tail feathers. So some of these field marks that we talk about, um, they're a bit variable. So we have to be careful and take into account the whole bird. We can't just look at one thing to identify, especially between tricky species like Cooper's hawks and sharp-shinned hawks. So this is a juvenile sharp-shinned hawk. Here we have a large dark bird. When we see that, we're thinking either eagles or vultures. In this case, we see kind of a grayish or dark featherless head. And we also see that this bird has white only at the wingtips and a very short tail. In fact, the toes almost stick out past the tail. All of those are good field marks for black vulture. Here we have another large raptor that's dark overall with quite a bit of white also. And we see a large head on this bird, so we should be thinking eagle rather than vultures. And by looking at the size of the head, which is quite large, we should be assuming bald eagle. And we can confirm that by looking at where the white is to the underside. And we see a lot of white here in the wing pit areas, which is a good field mark for bald eagle. And this is a juvenile bald eagle. We can see that all of the feathers on the trailing edge of the wings are the same length. This was a bird that would have been born this spring or summer. And you can see a little bit of light shining through here on the inner primaries. That's another thing you can look for on the juvenile or first year bald eagles. Here we have a black bird sitting in a tree. We can see a yellow eye and we see that it 
underneath the bird isn't streaked at all, but it's not completely dark either. It's kind of a brownish, or you could say rusty color, because this is a rusty blackbird, which is an uncommon but expected migrant this time of year. Here we have a hawk and a soar, and this is that classic hawk silhouette. This is a beautio. And looking at the bird, we see that it has dark patagial bars and a belly band, which makes this a red-tailed hawk. We also see that it has a dark trailing edge to the wings and a red tail, although on the underside, sometimes it just looks more orangish, making this an adult red-tailed hawk. Here we have a large dark raptor high overhead. We see overall it's dark underneath, but we do see small white patches here in the center of the wings and some white or gray here at the base of the tail. And if we look here at the back of the neck, again called the nape, we see that there's a gold color. And that is because this is a golden eagle. This was our second of the season. And here's the same golden eagle in a glide as it came overhead. So again, you can see those white patches in the wings and those are variable, not necessarily based on the age. Although if it does have white patches, that tells you that it is not an adult. But first year golden eagles can have really big white patches or they can have really small ones. So it's not like a progression that the youngest ones have the biggest white patches. And unless you can see molt or really get a close look at the birds, sometimes they're hard to age to a specific year. But by seeing the white patches, we know at least that it's an immature golden eagle. And overall, looking at the shape, the one thing you want to look at on golden eagles compared to bald eagles is that golden eagles have a small head. So if you look at how much the head sticks out compared to the tail, it looks like the head is quite small compared to the tail. So that's probably the most obvious thing in the silhouette of a golden eagle that makes it stand out. And in fact, sometimes when they're high overhead, you might mistake them more for a turkey vulture than you would for a bald eagle. Here we have a lanky raptor. We can see quite a long tail and long wings that are rounded, but a little bit pointed. And if you look at the face, it's kind of got an owl-like facial disc. We see a lot of orange coloration underneath. This is a juvenile northern harrier. Here we have a hawk. Looking at the underside, we see an obvious belly band, very clean upper breast, and we see that it has dark patagial bars. So this is another red-tailed hawk. But looking at this one, it's very pale overall. We see it doesn't really have a dark trailing edge to the wings, and the tail isn't really red or orange. It's more of brownish with a little bit of banding to it. That makes this a juvenile red-tailed hawk. Here's a raptor and a glide. It's holding its wings up into a little bit of a V. It kind of holds it into a V and then flattens out. That's sometimes called a modified dihedral. Overall, the color of this bird is very white underneath. We see some gray here on the head and we see dark at the wingtips and the trailing edge of the secondaries. This is another Northern Harrier. This is the adult male plumage. Here we have another raptor in a somewhat similar posture, but on this bird we see that the tail is not quite as long as we saw in that harrier and the wings are a bit more broad. And if we look near the wingtips, we can see pale crescents where the light is shining through. This is a juvenile red-shouldered hawk. And let me just flip back and forth a few times between the harrier and the red-shouldered so you can kind of get a comparison. Here's the harrier again. Again, note the long tail and the more pointed wingtips. And back to the red shoulder, kind of a medium length tail and more squared off or blunt wing tips. Looking at the Harrier one more time, notice how they hold their wings up a little bit into a V. And back to the red shoulder, they kind of not really hold their wings up into a V, but they kind of arch their wings a little bit. Here we have a distant hawk that's shaped like a flying cross. We see a real long tail with the head sticking out and kind of long straight wings overall, very lanky bird. We should be thinking accipiter anytime we see the flying cross shape. And on this bird, we see a really big rounded tail. And we see that the wings are held out very straight. That's usually a good field mark for Cooper's hawk. And just from the appearance of a more brownish looking head and a white underside, we know that this is a juvenile. And I would say on the distant Cooper's hawks like this, you usually get more of that contrast between the brown head and the whiter breast of the bird. You don't really see that contrast as much on the sharp-shinned hawk, but the tail here just being so rounded is another good field mark for juvenile Cooper's hawk.
And speaking of Cooper's Hawks, here we have two of them together in a tree. The bottom bird here that you can see better is a juvenile. Again, notice that vertical teardrop streaking to the underside, more brownish overall. And the bird here on top is an adult. You can see that it's more bluish to the top side and the head, and then more of orange barring to the underside. Here we have a raptor going away from us. Perhaps this bird snuck by and this was the only view you got of it. How would you identify this? Well, we see very pointed wingtips, and that's a sign that this bird is probably a falcon. And watching it fly away, we'd probably see it flapping constantly. And then looking to the underside of the body, we see a lot of dark streaking. Those are good field marks for a merlin. Here's a hawk that we're seeing a lot of this time of year as we're in their peak migration time. From the overall shape, we should be thinking Budio, although this Budio does have a little bit of a longer tail than some of the others. But from the overall plumage, it's pretty obvious what this is. Really orange to the underside with some black and white to the wings and tail. This is an adult red-shouldered hawk. Here we have another exhibitor, and you can see that when they're in a glide, sometimes they pull their wingtips back and they look more pointed than they would in a soar, but it's more that rounded wingtip of a hawk compared to the really pointed wingtips of a falcon. Looking at this bird, we see an extremely squared off tail with all of the tail feathers being the same length, and we have that kind of bug-eyed look, making this a sharp-shinned hawk, and the thick, messy streaking to the underside make this a juvenile. Here we have another exhibitor, but this one's kind of big and mean looking. I mean, look at that face, just the way that the eye and the bill look, very fierce facial expression. We see orange barring to the underside, indicating that this is an adult. And we see that this bird is probably a little bit mad. We can see these undertail coverts, these white feathers here are really fluffed out. And that's something that they do when they see another Cooper's hawk. And I think this one was on a mission to chase it away. And speaking of chasing away, here we have two adult bald eagles that one was chasing the other. Here we have an all black bird. This is not a raptor, but rather this is a corvid. And on this bird, we can see a really large bill. We can see long wings that are somewhat pointed and a diamond shaped tail. This is a common raven. Here we have another flying cross, so an exhibitor. On this bird, we see a large head with a very fierce facial pattern. We see teardrop streaking concentrated more on the upper breast, and we see very lanky shape overall with wings held out straight. This is a juvenile Cooper's hawk, and notice the tail tip on this one. There's a huge difference between the length of the outer tail feathers, which end about here, and the central ones, which end about here. So we talked earlier about that sharp-shinned hawk where there was a little bit of a difference in tail length, but on this Cooper's hawk, it is super obvious. Here's an example of what I talked about earlier when I said that some juvenile sharp-shinned hawks can have very thick, messy streaking underneath. You won't ever really see a Cooper's hawk that has this sort of streaking underneath. This bird actually almost more looks more like the orange barring of an adult exhibitor, but this is a juvenile with this brown streaking underneath. So this is juvenile sharp-shinned hawk. Taking a look at hawk count, you can see that the theme for November has been steady flights every day. Um, the highest day was just over 200 birds, but every day we've had at least 100. It's been steady with vultures migrating, some days with a lot of eagles, some a moderate number, pretty good numbers of harriers. In fact, yesterday on the 7th, we had 16, which tied for the second highest ever in one day. Exhibitor numbers are somewhat low to moderate, especially Cooper's hawks, just getting a few here and there. Red shoulders, as I mentioned earlier, were coming into the peak time, and you can see on November 3rd, we had 96 of them. So not a record day, but getting up there. Anytime you're into triple digit red shoulders, that's definitely peak time of the season. And that day was a lot of fun. Uh, we had a nice cloud cover and um, just a really steady flight even late into the day. In fact, we probably would have liked to stay a little bit longer, but a really good flight that day. And you can see uh, red shoulder numbers continued, not quite in those big numbers, but a couple days with 20 or so. Um, red tails, not really any days with huge numbers. In fact, the most we've had in a day here, only 21. Um, as we have some weather coming up that's a little colder, hopefully those numbers pick up a little bit. Um, you know, you'd like to get some days with triple digit red tails, but it's just been so warm recently. Uh, the only golden eagle of the period was just that one on the third. So we've had two so far for the season which is really low for this time of year. 
um, compared to how many we had had last year at this time. I don't know what the number was, but it was probably at least 12 or 15 or somewhere around there. So just not many Golden Eagles moving yet, it seems. And Falcon numbers as we come into November are typically pretty low. We're still seeing a few Kestrels and Merlins here or there, and we did have one Peregrine on the 4th. But those numbers start to wind down as we get into the colder weather here later in November. Can see so far for November we've had 1,217 birds, and for the season up around 6,700 total raptors. So relatively low, just because we missed the broad wings earlier in the season. But it's been steady flights really for the past couple of weeks. We haven't really had many days with uh, really unfavorable weather, and we haven't had a lot of huge days either. Coming up, it looks like there's. Good winds uh, for tomorrow, for Saturday, and then for Sunday, there's some rain that will be moving through, and then uh, probably a cold front pushing out that rain. Looks like it'll get windy as we get into next week with some westerly winds and then some more northerly winds. Um, not really looking like it's going to get super cold, though. Um, a couple nights getting down, maybe into the 40s or even the, the 30s, but the daytime highs are getting up you know, relatively warm, at least in the 50s or even the 60s for most days. So um, I don't know what it's going to take to start pushing down Canada geese and golden eagles and things like that. But we're enjoying relatively nice weather and steady flights, but uh, we're just missing some of those birds we'd really like. You know, we got the rough leg and we've had two golden eagles, but we're always hoping for big numbers of golden eagles, especially since we missed the broad wings this year. So it'll be interesting to see if just with the warmer weather in the first half of November, if that means that we might get more birds into the second half of November as we close out the season. Sometimes those last few weeks can be slow, but this year, if the birds are delayed a little bit because of the warm weather, maybe we'll get some big flights to end the season and maybe birds will even be moving in decent numbers into December. So we'll have to see. And I hope you can come out and visit us out at the Hawk Watch up on the hill at the Ashland Nature Center in Hokesson, Delaware sometime soon. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.